From 18 hours to just 3 hours of printing time, these are my 10 tips for faster printing on budget printers. I make sure my printer is calibrated. The basics are bed leveling, Z offset, PID tuning for the hot end and bed and E steps. By the way, the proper way to calibrate E steps is without the nozzle or an unplugged Bowden system because E steps refer to how much filament is being fed through the extruder only. I found out I can print way faster than the stock profile suggested. The max printing speed is limited by how fast my heater and nozzle combination can keep all melting filament, also known as volumetric flow. And by increasing the speed, the printer needs to increase the rate at which filament is being melted. To determine my true max volumetric flow, I run a small test print. It's increasing the speed every few layers and when it starts failing, I know that's my max flow. And to be on the safe side, I keep it at 100 millimeters per second because if I go over that speed, the layer addition starts to be brittle and not so good. Speed is not everything. When I increase the speed from 50 millimeters per second to 100 millimeters per second, the printing time only reduces by 10 minutes and not by a half. And that's because most of the time is spent on reaching that speed and that's called acceleration. I can increase the acceleration, but that will introduce printing artifacts, the need for more precise calibration and require better cooling solutions and other upgrades. And that's way too complicated for me because I like to keep it simple. A big part of 3D printing for me is prototyping. And prototyping means printing and reprinting the same slightly modified parts again and again and again. So I just cut it out. What do I mean? When designing this hex key holder, I wanted to check the fit on those two parts. So instead of printing the whole thing, I just cut it out and I print only what I need to test. And that saves me a massive amount of time and massive amount of filament. When possible, I position my object horizontally. Now this is the same rectangular box and it prints two times faster when it's printed horizontally. In general, less layers means less printing time. When printing out this foam cutter, I saw that the top layers will be unnecessary. So I disabled them in the slicer, I saved a few minutes of print time and, and a little bit of filament. I saved the most amount of time by avoiding print failures. Of course, it's impossible to predict things like clock nozzle or power outage, but there are a few things I can do to avoid my next failure and that's running a small test print. If I'm using a feature for the first time, for example, like the color changing command, I wanna test it out. Does it really work in real life? I got a new brand of filament, I wanna run a small test print. How does it perform on my printer? And it's better to know now that my filament runout sensor doesn't work than to wake up to some ghost printing. I think that the most common layer height is 0.2 millimeters. It is the middle ground between speed and details. Most of my prints don't need the high details and that's where I print on a 0.44 millimeter layer height with a 0.6 nozzle. For some reason, the thicker layer lines are overlooked. Just look how they name them in the slicers. Draft, super chunky and chunky. This was printed at 0.44 millimeter layer height and it, this is not a draft, this is a usable part. The benefits of thicker layer lines is faster printing and stronger parts with less walls. Infill has few roles. It serves as structural support, reinforcing for strength and rigidity, and support for top layers. Now more infill will make stronger parts, but how strong do I really need them to be? And after lots of experimenting, I'm usually using between 5 and 15% infill. For example, this sofa leg that carrying my weight uses only 10% infill. And if I want stronger parts, I'll just add more walls. Less infill means less printing time, and less filament usage. Question, those are three identical 100 millimeter cubes, but the only difference between them is the wall thickness. Now, which one of those will take the longest time to print? The two millimeter wall will be the longest, and this speaks to the designers among us. When I optimize wall thicknesses, it saves on printing time and in Prusa slicer under perimeters, it says the ideal wall thickness for the number of perimeters I want to print. And this is exactly why I chose the 1.22 millimeters and the 2.45. I switched to a 0.6 nozzle 
a few months ago and I'm never looking back at the 0.4. In this example, the 0.6 will print three walls for a two millimeter cube, while the 0.4 will need five walls. Now, a bigger nozzle will result in less details, but in most cases, I choose the faster print over the high detail one. Now let's do a quick example on how I optimize a file before sending it to the printer. This is going to be your standard Ender 3 profile with a 0.6 nozzle, about 18 hours of printing time. I'm going to start by switching to a 0.6 nozzle, reducing the printing time to about nine hours. Under layer and parameters, I'm disabling all the quality settings. Four top and three bottom layers are going to be just enough. Disabling the skirt, don't need it. Raising most of the speeds to 100 millimeters per second and 7% infill. This is something I'm struggling to understand. The solid infill is now at six minutes. Notice how it goes up when I switch to a 0.44 millimeter layer height. The solid infill adds about an hour of printing time for some reason and there's no way to disable it in the slicer. And if somebody knows how can I avoid it, please let me know in the comments. That's my optimization. I hope you like it. I'll see you next time.